we've we've learned a lot about our Milky Way, its structure, what's on the inside, how much it potentially weighs, all that good stuff. But what about our neighbors, right? We looked at the star, our sun, and the stars around it, and it's not until you get really far away you see anything kind of unique. What about our local galactic neighborhood? Well, if you look at the overall map of the sky, which we've seen before, the Milky yes. Way, you can see it looks like two bits of the Milky Way that have wandered off. Yeah, these, so these look faint and fuzzy, and they look like chunks of the Milky Way, but they're not part of the Milky Way, right? No, these are the Magellanic Clouds, so-called because Magellan claimed to have discovered them because they're in the Southern Hemisphere, though, of course, Aborigines had known them for tens yeah. of thousands of years before that. And here's a close-up of these two things. And these are two small galaxies orbiting around our own Milky Way galaxy. So these are much smaller than our Milky Way, but they are orbiting around the outside? And they're actually much bigger than the globular clusters and the halo of the galaxy. So, so how big are they, roughly? Well, we're talking about 100 million stars or something okay. like that, or so, a bit more than that. So. so dramatically bigger than those globular clusters, but still pretty small compared to our Milky Way. And these are examples of what are called irregular dwarf galaxies. Okay. So they are galaxies, they are... I don't know what shape you'd call that, but it's not really... It's, yeah, I guess that's why we call it a regular, right? It doesn't have yeah. a shape. It's not a disk galaxy, yeah. nice, nice well-defined disk like the Milky Way galaxy. And there are the two of these orbiting around us. If you go further out, you see about... So those are about 150,000 light years away. Uh -huh. About 2 million light years away and in the Northern Hemisphere. So you Northern Hemisphere people have got something to be proud about. Is the Andromeda Galaxy M31. Now this looks disky, like our own Milky Way. It's almost a clone of the Milky Way. We okay. think it's about. It's probably slightly more massive than the Milky Way. It doesn't seem to have quite such a bar that we do. But it even has some other small dwarf galaxies orbiting around it as well. And it has globular clusters and a halo orbiting around it. So it's, it looks very much like our own Milky Way galaxy. So is it? But it's further away. So is it bigger? Is it smaller? About the same size? It's about the same. It's so slightly bigger than the Milky okay. Way. We think. And altogether, this is what's called the local group of galaxies. All right. So this consists of two big galaxies, the Milky Way and Andromeda, and uh, one or two medium-sized ones, and a whole bunch of dwarfs and globular clusters and things like that. And it's about two, three, four million light years across. Okay, so these are kind of our neighboring galaxies that are n relatively near us. Yeah, so we live... You know, those, when you as a kid tried to work out your address. Yeah, that's right. You'd say the, the street name, the city, the town, the country, the continent, and then you go your Earth, <laughs> solar system, Milky Way, and then what next? Yeah. And the next would be local, local group. group. Okay. So what goes on beyond the local group? Well, if you start looking further out, you start seeing other local groups. Okay. So our local group, again, is not that special. It is Most galaxies simple. live in groups of you know, two or three big galaxies and a whole bunch of dwarfy crap. Okay. So um, we start seeing several more little local group groups. analogues. Yep. But then when we get out to about uh, a bit further away, uh, um, more than 10 million light years away, we see Whoa! There's one part of the sky, up in the northern hemisphere now, in the constellation Virgo, which yep. is just covered in galaxies. Yeah, so, so all of these are galaxies that are mostly disky. There's some other shapes going on here. And they all weigh a lot and all have potential things going on. So this is called it. the Virgo Cluster. Okay. So, so a lot of galaxies are just in little local groups. These are kind of like country galaxies. Okay. And now we're talking about the big city. Okay. The big smoke. Ah. And this is a cluster of galaxies that contain hundreds or thousands of galaxies. And these are all relatively, you know, these aren't just all dinky dwarf galaxies. These are all real galaxies. They contain hundreds of big galaxies and vast numbers of dinky little dwarf galaxies. But these are much bigger than the local <laughs> Astronomers are very galaxyist in terms of their size, but that's okay. Yes. And in fact, one thing you do see in, in these is a bunch of so-called elliptical galaxies. So we've talked a lot about disk galaxies so far. So what yep. makes an elliptical galaxy different? So normally in these local groups, you mostly see disk galaxies. Okay. But when you get to these clusters, Virgo is the nearest, but there are a lot of other clusters, yep. one every 20, 30 million light years or so. Some of them much bigger than Virgo, which itself yes. is pretty big. And they contain galaxies like these ellipticals, which are quite different. So they are elliptical shape? Is that the idea? Yes. Yeah, so if you look at it, I mean, it looks like an um, elliptical blob. Yeah. It doesn't have a flattened disk. No, that's right. It, it also, the, the colour looks a little bit different as well. Yeah. They seem to be entirely made of old stars. There's almost no gas in these. There's not any cold gas. So unlike these disk galaxies, which sometimes have these beautiful spirals, which is where you get this gas concentrating and 
potentially forming new stars, a little bit chaotic, this is used up all of its gas? Is that the idea? Yes, it looks like these things have either heated the gas so much it can't form molecular clouds or just blown it out. Okay. And so that means they're very old. You don't get own B stars. All you get is the red giants, which is why they've got the reddish color. Ah, so essentially it's made up of entirely old stars, whereas our Milky Way is made up of a mixture. Yeah, because our Milky Way is still forming stars, because it's still got dust clouds, whereas this thing, all the star formation is over. Okay. It's just sitting there aging in place. And the motion of stars is quite different in these things. Like all it is like a swarm of bees. Okay. Instead of orbiting around the center, the stars are just sort of zooming in and out in all sorts of random directions. So it's like almost this. a bit like the halo stars in ours, where they're just going all different directions? That's right. It's actually a lot like the halo, only much, much, much more massive. And these are actually the most massive galaxies we know. Oh, OK. So these are a lot bigger than the disk galaxies. You add up the total number of stars and the total mass. And in fact, the total amount of dark matter. These things have lots of dark matter as well. These are generally the top of the galaxy hierarchy. These ah, are the, top of the, the sumo wrestlers yes, of galaxies. OK. And the lower, lower end elliptical galaxies overlap in mass with the high end spiral disk galaxies like our own Milky Way. OK. But generally speaking, when you're looking at 10, 20, 30, 100 times more massive than the Milky Way, they're only going to be ellipticals. Ah, OK. OK. Gotcha. And they generally mostly live in clusters. So, okay, so there's very few by themselves. They're all in these big clusters that you just showed. That's right. And why is that the case? Um, well, we think these things are often produced when galaxies, disk galaxies, collide. Yeah, so, okay. So, you, we have these disk galaxies, and occasionally we think that when they collide, they form these bigger elliptical galaxies? Yeah, so we've got a simulation of these things colliding, and as, as they get closer to each other, they start... Um, pulling each other apart. Now, remember that a galaxy is mostly empty space. Yep. So there's a lot of empty space between any two stars. Yes, yeah, so, so it's not like the stars and planets are colliding. So two people firing machine guns at each other. The odds of any two bullets going head to head and dropping to the ground is remote. That's right. They're actually, the odds of bullets colliding is much higher than the odds of stars colliding when two galaxies go through, because there's a lot more empty space. OK. But when the two galaxies go through each other, they, they don't collide the stars, mm -hmm. the gas clouds, if there are any, will collide yep. and probably have a huge burst and form more stars. Yep. But the stars have their orbits distorted. Ah, OK. So the gravity will definitely pull them out of their pattern. So these nice circular orbits we've seen for disk galaxies... Start becoming a little bit more chaotic. Yep. And indeed, this is actually what's going to happen to us and Andromeda M31 in a few million years' time. So the idea is because we're relatively close that over time we are kind of attracted to each other and we are going to merge. Yeah. We can actually measure the orbits of Andromeda yep. at ourselves. It's just about close enough we can do that. Yep. And so a few million years time, this is what the Milky Way might look like. So instead of seeing just one ring disk around the Milky Way, we would see our own Milky Way and Andromeda as well. That's right. And they'll collide. Here's a simulation of the collision of us and Andromeda. So is there, is, so do we, is there a galaxy that wins this collision, I guess is the question? Not really, because they're about the same mass. OK. And so what's going to end up is a merged, probably chaotic and eventually elliptical galaxy. You're going to get these beautiful, complicated shapes in the middle. I, heaven knows what the Milky Way is going to look like at the yeah, time like yeah. this. Um, but essentially, it's all of that gas in those stars are being stretched now because of the gravity. Their orbits are being changed. There'll be a huge burst of star formation as That's all the right. gas is compressed. And the stars will be warped into funny orbits. And then we'll come back together again and... So it kind of, it kind of keeps doing this process. Fall backwards yeah. and forwards lots of times. Until eventually we end up in a big muddled mess called an elliptical galaxy, most likely. So we will be essentially a merged version of it. So when we were looking at the globular clusters earlier, and we think some of the globular clusters come in and our Milky Way kind of pulls them and rips them apart. It's kind of a similar process here, except we're both equal. So we yes. both come off worse for wear. That's right. And we can see this process happening in other galaxies. OK. So we see pairs of galaxies So this, like so this, this. is a real galaxy image, uh, yeah. like that simulation we were It's not a simulation. This is a real picture of a galaxy. And this is, seems to be a, a pair of roughly equal galaxies like us and Andromeda in the middle of a collision. OK. And you can see tails of stars being pulled out. And in fact, you can make a kind of time sequence. Oh, you can, OK. This is not actually a real simulation, because of course, these collisions take hundreds of millions of years. We can't actually watch one. That's a long PhD. Watch this collision and see what happens. <laughs> but so these are different snapshots 
uh, with the phases just of different galaxies. We've put it kind of in order. And you can see as they get closer and closer, they start pulling each other to pieces. You get tails going out. Eventually, the cores merge and end up with a sort of fuzzy, distorted blob, which might eventually settle down to an elliptical galaxy. And because all of the stars, as they've gone in here, have kind of been pulled and yanked all these different ways, that's why we think in an elliptical galaxy, the stars are all pulled and yanked in different ways. So, right, we've now kind of seen the different classes of galaxies. We've got the disk galaxies, we've got the irregular dwarf galaxies, we've got the elliptical galaxies that mostly live in clusters. Yep. Um, and we've got all these merging distorted things, which are galaxies caught in the act of collision. That's right.